The Middle Fork of the Judith River is a tributary of the Judith near Lewistown, Montana. The watershed is managed primarily by the Helena, Lewis, and Clark National Forest as a wilderness study area. Historically, the Middle Fork of the Judith was a tremendous West Slope cutthroat trout fishery. The wilderness study area included 19 private inholdings. These were only accessible by a jeep road which ran along and through the stream corridor. Advances in OHV technology led to increased use of the road and further degradation of the river. Here with the fish population, in a lot of cases you still have fish, but this reach a stream, uh, we've lost almost the entire fish population, so it's like really in your face, the biological component, not just looking at the embedded substrate and the amount of material that's on top of the substrate, that's that fine material, but also the fact that the biological component is also missing. So it's really more in your face and obvious when, when the larger megafauna are, you know, are gone. In 2019, Montana Trout Unlimited pulled together partners to work towards a multi-phase project to address this complex problem. MTU partners included the Montana Department of Environmental Quality, United States Forest Service, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, Snowy Mountain Chapter of Trout Unlimited, Wild Montana, Circle Bar Guest Ranch, and numerous other private contributors. The project utilized local contractors and also took input from multiple user groups. This one's going to be a challenge. We've got some large trees here, here, a couple large trees that maybe we can fill these holes with and then maybe borrow a little bit from the slope. But there's so much bank missing here. We've got multiple crossings and as one crossing gets too scoured, then the users are just moving over to the next site. And then when they're side by side like this, we're losing the material between the crossings. And so we just end up with this large scour. And the sites have been bad and you have a vertical face. And it just keeps exacerbating with the sedimentation going into the water. What we counted, I think, was 82 entrances to this river and 27 ports. <clears throat> this is the most degraded section, crossing 17 to 1. And 17 fords, 49 entrances to those fords. When, that was two years ago, or three years ago. When we got back here this year, there were 52 ramps to the river. But this is just one of those places where it was introduced to me as a, a really neat opportunity. One that had been in the works for a long time. So I got over here about three years ago just to take a look at it and, uh, you know, looked at the impacts, the aquatic resource impacts, and was just sold that this is a project that should go, must go. You know, the impacts that are here from this up the gut kind of road, the sediment effects, the fisheries effects, the partnership potential. It's just one of those awesome projects where it showed me that, you know, it's worth investing in a different place, in a different resource. The river's location in steep rocky terrain necessitated thorough planning. The project was completed between September of 2020 and September of 2024. In phase one of the project, the road was realigned from Middle Fork Judith Trailhead to Yoga Creek in order to allow heavy machinery access for subsequent phases. Phase two obliterated and replaced an erosive 35 degree road on a hill slope with a more sustainable road design, including switchbacks and drainage. In phase three, a motorcycle trail was upgraded from the top of Woodchopper Ridge down Arch Coulee. The new route preserves access while circumventing the most heavily impacted area of the river. The trail reconstruction also uncovered a long forgotten natural arch that has become a popular stopping point. Phase four focused on rehabilitating the area upstream of Arch Coulee. In phase five, the old riparian road was obliterated and over 1,000 feet of bank line and two and a half miles of stream was restored. You're standing on uh, what was an entrance, an OHV entrance to the river. We started by collecting cobbles and rock, building a tow, and then we take fine cobble and fill in some holes, take transplants, fill in behind the, the uh, tow. One by one, 52 stream entrances at 17 fours of the river 
were rehabilitated using materials found on site. While this restoration can take several hours per entrance, here we can see it condensed down to just a few moments. Crossing 17, the highest crossing before the road closure. We just got done restoring the stream bank. Here in a year or two, you won't even know that a road was ever there. Getting to aquatic restoration, um, finding the right partners, finding the right priorities, doing the right projects, those things, just it doesn't, it doesn't grow on trees. It's not easy. We're not a fishing club, we're a conservation organization. And that's thankfully that's true because I'm not much of a fisherman, but I'm really interested in the conservation and the preservation of what little wilderness we have left. And so the restoration, getting getting the vehicles out of this river and maybe restoring it in a few years to a natural fishery is is yeah, it's it's monumental. Mm -hmm.